Mike, good to see you. Hey, man. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So, back in the berg. Back in the berg. Back in the berg. Every time you step foot in Pittsburgh, I try to corral you here, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, a bit, Pittsburgh's cool, man. Best I can. Yep. I'll just... make sure he gets you here one way or another. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm really thankful. Appreciate it, man. Gents, um, what is the state of trust in society in 2023? The state of trust. Hmm. Between what? I would imagine I can <clears throat> I can generically say between each other, mm-hmm. but we can certainly talk about institutions. We can talk about media. We can talk about entertainment. We could talk about family, friends, organizations, mm-hmm. clubs, religion, however you want to go. But I think there's a, I think there's a conversation to be had in regards to our view on how we trust the world that we find ourselves in today and the people that are maneuvering in it. Because mm-hmm. I think it has yeah. certainly changed. At least I can see it's changed in the last decade and definitely in the past two decades. Mm-hmm. And definitely in the past three or four with the with the web and so forth. Well, when you, so when you say it's changed, meaning people have become less trusting in others, is that, is that, what your, is that your perception right now? I think there's elements of that, okay. and, and maybe I think we've also exhibited more trust, sometimes poorly. Okay, <laughs> I, I I see that I see both sides of that. I think I think one there's there is less trust because there's so much information now, right? And we don't know what to trust. I also think there is more trust because there's so much information, because people just say there's so much information. I pick this piece. I trust this. And they trust almost blindly sometimes mm-hmm. because they don't want to think through everything else. They just it's it's kind of their safety valve of having to discern things from all the information out there. That's how I, so I think it goes both ways. I think there's a lot more trust in some you know semblance of society, and I think there's a lot less trust in others. Okay, so I didn't really answer your question. I just answered it both ways. So. Yeah, I, your question is a massive question. Very massive. And it's... Mm-hmm. Um, you can bust it up any way you want. Yeah, well, it, it, so I'm a weirdo because I'm trained as an ontological coach, so I look at human mm-hmm. behavior and the way human beings operate, right? Mm-hmm. And so I look at trust, and, and, and trust is something, how I look at it is trust is a gift. Like, I give you my trust. It's, it's, a, fun, it's a choice I make. On top of that, there's confidence, and confidence is something you earn. Right. Mm -hmm. So I trust freely. I don't give my confidence away. Confidence has got to be proven because otherwise you're a jack off. Right. You're a fool. Mm. And so and I think what's happened is we we lack that discernment in our culture because we want instant karma all the time. When you're Mm -hmm. talking about institutions and things like that, I mean, what I see is the institutions, You uh, like we were talking before the show started, is everyone's showing their cards right now just by the way they're operating. So the institutions, you're starting to see really what their behaviors are. And those behaviors are based on their values. And those values are based on what they're actually living into and what they actually care about. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it, let's just take a certain president, for instance, right? He's not operating in alignment with it. He took the oath of office about it. He's, he's operating in alignment with his own self-interest. Don't, and they, so, don't they all, though? I mean, well, I, I, I think they all do, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and so what ends up happening, but it's starting to get exposed. So, we're, you know, I think anybody who's, like, halfway paying attention has got to call bullshit on it soon. And, and, and so that what that means is our trust in institutions is diminishing. Look at church attendance, Right. Like the, 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 you know, you don't have to go very far and find someone, you know, who has been, has at least one degree of separation from a childhood molestation by a priest. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't have to go very far where you, you go to some kind of uh, Protestant church where there's been either some sexual misconduct or some embezzlement going on. Mm-hmm. You know, all these things are cesspools for, for like not doing what they say they're going to do. And what's happened is we've granted so much grace for not allow, not holding people to account that nobody's being held to account. And that has this, this ripple effect mm-hmm. to where, we're, you know, it's like you're foolish if you trust someone. So, mm-hmm. so I think what's going to happen 
is this is, you know, it's always darkest before the storm. I think we're really on the brink of, and I'm a super optimist, really on the brink of a, a, a revitalization of integrity and a revitalization of really people coming to the forefront and doing what they say they're going to do. I mean, mm-hmm. one of the reasons our buddy here has the success he does is because he's really simplified the practice of law mm-hmm. and he does exactly what he says. Mm-hmm. And there's no surprises, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Exactly, I mean, yeah. It, it, it's it's not mm-hmm. a complex business structure. Mm-hmm. What it is, it's it's difficult mm-hmm. to execute. Yeah, mm-hmm. because it takes stamina, it takes courage, mm-hmm. it takes conviction, it takes consistency. Mm-hmm. But it's 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 not breakthrough no. thought, you know. No, it, it is. I, mean, I think integrity is a, is a big piece of it, right? I think yeah. it's you know, I, I think a lot less people now do what they say they're going to do. Right. I think they say they're going to do things to feel good about the potential of doing them, but don't do them. I but, think I think that's part of the problem. Well, look what's happened, Rocco, is we've gotten into, since at least 2001, mm-hmm. we've gotten into exception management as like the, the course of study. Yeah, right? that's a good point. Yeah. Right? Yep. So we have, a, we have a terrorist attack in 2001, and the guy in charge suspends the Constitution. And it creates mm-hmm. the, the largest government institution ever to keep us away from terror right Mm -hmm. and has anything has the world gotten better since then no you know Mm -hmm. i don't know yeah you know i'm not in the business of assessing that but i'm just noticing that instead of following Mm -hmm. operating by the principles we we created and the accountabilities we've created we get into exception management anytime there's some type Mm -hmm. of new event covid happened yeah Right? Oh, let's lock down the economy. How come? Well, and, and again, I, th- I think to your point, I think I think a lot of the problem is we lack principles anymore. Exactly. We lack accountability. We lack responsibility now, and that's that's why trust has mm-hmm. taken the hit it has because we don't. I mean, just if you take five people off the street yeah. and ask them, what are your guiding principles in life? And you and I've had this discussion before. Do you think all five of them would be able to articulate five solid guiding principles that dictate how they operate in the world? I doubt it. But that's but that's the thing. So then how do you trust that person? If they don't have guiding principles, right? Like if you like if I know your guiding principles, right? I I can trust and be confident, to Mike's point, mm-hmm. in what you're going to do because I know your principles. I know how you operate. Your principles guide your decision making, mm-hmm. guide your actions. If you don't have them, you're going to be subject to the whims of others. You're going to be subject to the manipulation of others. So I can't trust or be confident in the actions you're going to take or not take because I don't know what's driving them because I don't know your principles. And I think when people don't have principles and can't articulate it, it's very hard to trust a person and be confident in that person Mm -hmm. because you don't know the person you're getting. Yeah, there's, there's there's additional uncertainty. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. It, my observation mm-hmm. seems to be that we are distrusting of our institutions, and we can argue the pros and cons of that, how we got there and all that, but I think the, the problem I have is that as technology keeps, in, I don't know if it's improving or continues expanding, mm-hmm. and the media we ingest is manipulated by this technology, mm-hmm. I think we're getting to a dangerous point where uh, whether it's through quote unquote AI or just uh, just misinformation mm-hmm. for manipulative purposes, whatever yeah. our ability to trust prior social norms is not as strong as it's been. And I see a trend going on and I wonder if that's going to lead to a lot of disorganization and that disorganiz- I guess this 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 organization is the right word, but I mean I, th- I think there's a certain um, would you not agree there's a certain amount of required order for a civilized mm-hmm. society? Absolutely, but 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 what are the, but but think about I look at it. Social norms have morphed and evolved and changed from what they were ten years ago. So mm-hmm. I think that it's, it's, so how do we define social norms? Right, you're saying we need, we should we don't should have operate like we used to with social norms. What are the social norms today? We don't. I mean, how do you define those? Well, good. No, and, and if you identify something as a social norm, mm-hmm. the chance of you being called a misogynist or a racist mm-hmm. or a whateverist, you know, mm-hmm. it's yeah. going to. Because what's happened is, is there's been this, you know, somewhere, somehow, there's been this rejected rejection of like the norms of Western civilization. Mm-hmm. And if, if we follow those, 
if we follow the basic Judeo-Christian ethics, mm-hmm. that's identified as being a colonialist or a colonialist or a um, capitalist or a it's the patriarchy. Mm-hmm. So, so there's this underlying current by a certain segment of the population that's that's identified everything quote unquote as norm as a norm mm-hmm. as bad. Correct. No, and, I would thoroughly agree with that. Right, and so. And, and, and most of that now has fallen inside. And see, here's the other thing. So I think what's really going on, you know, one of the things that nobody talks about is I think we're actually, I think there's always been this battle of good versus evil, right? Okay, mm-hmm. yeah. And it, but it's always been kind of under the covers and, you know, everybody kind of squinted at. And I think right now there is this, this battle of chaos versus order. Okay. Right? Okay. And leading the chaos is a lot of these, quote unquote, and this is my perspective, you know, I don't want to put words in anyone else's mouth, but is a lot of these socialist or communist ideals, right? And, you know, the the DEI is a big one of them, you know, the diversity, equity, and inclusion. I mean, nobody can argue that diversity and equality and inclusion is a bad thing, Mm -hmm. but the way they roll it out. And the way they use language and the way they change things and the way and, and if you one of the greatest books ever written is the rules for radicals by Saul Alinsky mm-hmm. and it, it's a playbook for creating chaos mm-hmm. and it's actually being implemented right now and you can you can witness it and it's hilarious and the media is driving it and the thing I don't understand is why they're doing that like what's in it for the media to do that you know um, attention attention I, I mean, it, I mean, think about it. If if if, if society is in order, then no one's really paying attention to you know, everything's good. But yeah. when when you have disorder and chaos, and people want to know what's going on, they want to be in the okay. know. So they're they're watching the news and they're mm-hmm. selling ads and they're and they're selling ad space because so many people's think like I I watch the news occasionally. Like during COVID, I was glued to the fucking TV. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's proof right in and of itself. When there is chaos, I'm a person who typically doesn't play to that because was fooled by it. i was watching press conferences every day yeah. trying to figure out what the fuck was going on and it was because there was chaos when there's no chaos i'm not paying attention i'm just going about my life yeah when there is chaos in society i'm paying attention what's going on i'm watching and, and of course advertisers and media companies are encouraged to create chaos because that's how they make money it, we're still a capitalist society right that's how i see it right well, the other thing, too, that I find fascinating, it's that graph that I drew a mm-hmm. few years ago, right? Yeah. So one of the things that's happened is we, there's, especially with AI and, and uh, social media and all the different media outlets and stuff, there is way more data and information coming at us than we can possibly ingest, mm-hmm. right? So, so the, the flood of data and information coming at us way, like way out kicks our coverage. Mm-hmm. Right, we can't. There's no way we can ingest it all. So, so do we have access to quote unquote the truth? Hmm. Right, bingo. So, mm-hmm. there's no longer bingo objective reality. Mm-hmm. All we're doing is operating these series of subjective reality. And then it becomes about an argument. Mm-hmm. Whose subjective re- reality do you want to buy off on? Mm-hmm. You know, and that's I think what we got going on is what's the version of subjective reality? Now, I've been thinking about this for a while. What becomes the antidote for that? Because when it's when it's all subjective reality, it's it's all chaos, right? Mm-hmm. But no, we can make the argument we're not too far from that now. No, exactly. Mm-hmm. I I really think we are. I mean, we're there, and it's not going to get any better. One day the switch isn't going to come on, and we're all going to become enlightened and get back to normal. Normal's yeah. gone, you know. <laughs> like it's not normal, yeah. right? Normal's mm-hmm. gone, and it's been gone really since about two thousand eight. But it's really gone now. You can see it. It's unequivocal. So, but I think what the solution is. And it comes down to, it t- comes down to awareness. It comes down to operating at a higher purpose, like having a, a vision or something that's bigger than you that you live into, and then creating alliances with people and building coalitions and communities and organizations that live in alignment with that. I think that's what that does is provides the beacon to go forward. Certainly, you know. And I think that's, and, and we each have the ability of that. And when we do that, and we start articulating about it, then we could start aligning ourselves with. Oh, well, it's kind of like you, how you and I have gotten together. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it, mm-hmm. it's a shit show out there, and it's two guys that kind of like, oh, we're aligned on these things, mm-hmm. you know. And that's what happens, and it just kind of naturally evolves. That's what that's what's so great about this podcast, that people will listen to this and go, yeah, these guys, are, 
are talking about, not the normal bullshit, right? Mm -hmm. 100%. Is, I think there's always been an element of, of the attempt to manipulate trust oh, in general, always. right? It's always, yeah. that's part of the human experience. Well, it's, it's how you gain power, you know? Correct, correct. We, I, I don't believe that we are sophisticated enough. I don't think any human is built in a way right now where we could possibly disseminate everything being thrown no, at us. No. So we have to pick and choose. Right. Mm -hmm. Where our lack of sophistication tends to be, from my observation, is we're not doing a great job of disseminating and choosing what to pay attention to, what not to pay attention to, right. what to investigate, what not to investigate. We just take a lot of things as they come and make some assumptions based upon mm -hmm. Will be in jest, and I don't think that we're doing a great job of of taking the guessing. We're just not guessing right. I mean, obviously, no. it's, the chaos is an example of the, we're just not choosing the right things to ingest mm -hmm. and use as a bedrock belief. Right. Well, but but, the, but so again, this is and I'll push back a little bit because that's your perspective, right? We're talking about we live in subjective realities. Your perspective is people aren't aren't listening to the right information. To them, it may be the right information. Mm -hmm. So it's like how how do we make that determination? What is the right information to listen to it's, it's definitely subjective i just would look to the to the basis of, of my uh, argument and it's not and again i'm not giving a specific mm -hmm. i'm not being so specific in saying that these things are right and these things are wrong and you're listening to the wrong mm -hmm. thing or, mm -hmm. and I'm, I, can't, I can't do that right, yeah. what i can do is look at the society and how chaotic it is mm -hmm. and the amount of fighting that we have and the things that are visible to us mm -hmm. And I can I can make an assumption from there that odds are likely we're probably not ingesting the right stuff in terms of yeah. accuracy. That is what I'm trying to say. I mean, subjective reality. Okay, well, mm -hmm. I get it. You can drill down and say, is that culturally black? Mm -hmm. You can get people and say, well, no, it really is a shade. It's a dark shade of gray. I get it. There's a lot of ways of looking at things, mm -hmm. but based upon just. Just take one, just one little thing. Mm -hmm. Crime statistics in mm -hmm. general. You can look at that as an indication that we, as a whole, probably are not adjusting the right kinds of realities and understanding consequences and understanding how things truly are. Mm -hmm. And people are entering into more crime, mm -hmm. what we've deemed as crime, mm -hmm. in the past, with increasingly every year. And I think that could be a that could be certainly a symptom of us ingesting. The wrong things, uh, we, ingesting the wrong information. So, okay, I mean, I I'm not disagreeing with that. But I don't I, I don't think that is the main cause of things like that. Because again, I think when, when you say ingesting the right or wrong information, right or wrong to whom? Like that that's the question, right? Okay. So so it comes down to like we're, we can say like what we believe is right and what we believe is wrong. To some people today mm -hmm. in this country, they believe that shoplifting. Mm -hmm is their right or their mm -hmm. entitlement. They, okay. have, they have somehow ingested a belief. Sure. Or someone's told them, they've read it, or they've just decided to because it seemed like it was fun. Okay, I don't but, what know. If, but what if they were shoplifting to feed their family because they had no other option? I'm just playing devil's advocate here. And, I, and I'll be glad to play devil's advocate. Okay. In, a, in a civilized society where order is required so that the bulk of the humans are safe, mm -hmm. rules are there for a reason. Yeah. So their justification that it was the right thing to do so my kids don't starve, I get the emotional mm -hmm. component of that. Would you do that? The reality, I, I would find another way because I what knew if there was harm. Way? I, well, there's always another way. Is there? Absolutely. There's in in, in America. If you're hungry, mm -hmm. you don't have to steal. If you need that perfume to go on a date from Nordstrom, you, you don't but, need but, to but steal. You, it. You're a well-read, educated person that could figure out the other way. Sometimes people, and I'm, again, I'm, I'm playing this out because I think this is an important point to make. We failed to inst instill the importance of laws in our country. Well, I think, I think people I, that I, believe that I, that's not required. I, I, I think that, but I also, but I also think people operate, and you've said it before, out of survival. That's a survival mechanism. So I'm not saying every shoplifter is doing it, but I'm saying some of them are. It's a survival mechanism. They're like. I have to feed my kids. I don't. There's no other way. I can't think of another way because I'm not intelligent enough to do that, or I haven't been educated enough to do it. I think that's an alt. I don't. I don't know, but but, but you can't. But you can't say that because it doesn't align with what you believe. Like this is where I'm going. Like, we're, we're having this subjective. This is, I believe it's, it's an rock, observation. It's rock, an observation. But, but what I'm right. But I'm saying, but your observation may be different than someone else's. Okay, so let me ask you this question. Okay, so being that reality is subjective, mm -hmm. if I believe there's a there's a enough of a cause for me to go kill an innocent person because in my subjective reality mm -hmm. it made sense what's just the, to me what's the cause i can't think like that 
But I'm I'm certain if everything's subjective and everybody's reality is unique but, to but, themselves. But, 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 but now now you're changing my argument. You're changing okay. my logic. My, my my logic was to feed your family. That is the that is what I'm stating. The subjective reality is: could I would I kill somebody to protect my family? Absolutely. One hundred percent, I would without question. Well, they wouldn't be they wouldn't be innocent then if you were getting ready to kill them. I said if if but what I'm saying is if someone if my family's life was in danger and my option was to kill or be killed, I would kill without I question. Think, I think most decent people would. You don't know that though, but we don't know that. But I'm saying like, I think, but you're right. You, some people say no murder is bad until you ask them that question. You put them to the test. That's moral relativism. So I guess where I was going with this was is. You're, you're spot on. I, I, we're we're in alignment, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to articulate w- w- where I see the danger is in in that we are taking mm-hmm. we are taking what has been traditionally the pillars of order in our society, mm-hmm. going back hundreds of years, but certainly in the modern era, the past 60, 70 years, when it comes to you know not hurting your neighbor, right. you know conducting yourself civil, sure. in dec- decency and civility in okay. public. Okay. And it's being slowly turned on its head. Mm-hmm. It's being questioned by and it could be the younger generations coming mm-hmm. up, could be. I don't know mm-hmm. where exactly it's coming from, but all of the things that we assume were part of civil society, decency, mm-hmm. a lot of these things are being questioned and being pushed up against and being pushed up against under, under the guise mm-hmm. of someone else's subjective reality or belief structure. Things that we probably would say we've never would see in our lifetime, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, rioting and burning buildings mm-hmm. for causes have for 34 years ago, there were severe consequences for doing that. Mm-hmm. Two years ago, not so much. The cause and the reason for that mm-hmm. was taken with a little more, I don't know, um, I don't know. There, there's more weight to the reason things are. Sometimes, I guess my point is, it looks to me like the reason for things mm-hmm. can be manipulated in a way where traditionally bad events in our society can be soft pedaled and somehow, eventually, through time, mainstreamed. And that's where I think we're looking at crime today, especially in some of our larger cities. That's kind of where we are, or where we're certainly headed. Mm-hmm. And that's and it isn't just crime, it's other aspects of society in general. You can look at you know, and, and there's again, these are not law things unless you want to get into the decency laws, but you look at like the overt sexual nature of what is online today, mm-hmm. what is on social media today, what children can be legally exposed to today, mm-hmm. not just online, but in in group settings, in, in institutions, and everything else. It's a changing world. And in that particular area, I think that mm-hmm. we're pushing up against quote-unquote norms, pushing up against order, and I'm not convinced right now that it bodes well for us collectively. And when I talk about chaos, I think we're headed to a very chaotic place where, <laughs> where we don't, trust our social norms anymore or just don't even trust them to keep us safe yeah or our children mm-hmm. safe mm-hmm. sometimes it isn't a physical it's it's the mental it's the it's it's you know 30 years ago no one in their right mind in their right mind would be okay with a practically naked woman doing a strip or lap dance in front of a six-year-old mm-hmm you wouldn't, I would, nobody would. Sure. Mm-hmm. Nobody. Today, there's about a third. Of, I'm going to throw numbers out. I'm guessing there's a third of the population. A third. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll say it's a fucking third. Mm-hmm. That really, if you ask them, eh, no big deal. So, mm-hmm. okay. I mean, I, I'm not here to tell you it's right or wrong. I'm just saying the odds are likely in 30 years, a third of the population is kind of okay with sexualizing or uh, sexual conduct sure. around children. How did we fucking get there? Okay, like, but 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 again, I, I think we're we're taking segments of the argument, and I and I think so. Look at, okay, go back seventy years. Segregation was normal. Mm-hmm. Then society's norms changed, mm-hmm. right? So w- where do we draw the line? That was the right way for norms to change. A million percent. And sometimes, so again, it, this is all. This is the whole point of everything subjective, right? We we have the three of us in this room pretty much have the same beliefs on most things, right? All I'm doing is articulating the other sides of the argument mm-hmm. where. 
what you're saying is, well, how did it change? Well, norms that we thought were terrible, like having segregation, that was a norm. People were like, this is okay. This is how it should be. And then it changed. We're like, that is the right way. Where there may be a portion of society that thinks the shit that we think is crazy now, they're thinking that's the right way. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying, I'm just playing out the other side of it. Yeah. And I think, well, it, and I think okay, that, but I think that, I would venture to say that the the average there's two sides of every argument is what I'm trying to articulate. I get that you're making my point. So ultimately, you're if if there's truly and two sides are going to be given equal weight, which I think in society now that's where we're headed. Okay. Then really we are headed for fucking chaos. No because, one's denying because, that. Because no, because no, there'll be no norms. There'll be no standard norms. No, you can't, you can't push against me because this is what I fucking believe. But, but, but I mean, if the argument is, well, that's what they believe, so we can't, we can't infringe on their belief. And I think there's a portion of our society that's, that does not want to infringe on the mm-hmm. belief of others. Mm-hmm. Now we draw some hard lines. We draw hard lines at murder. Yeah. You know, we draw some hard lines and say you can't do that no matter do what we? your belief is. I think we do. I don't know, but 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 some of the other things that were were we deemed as a society that mm-hmm. were not healthy for the for the group, mm-hmm. we've pushed so far back on them now, mm-hmm. and I guess what I'm saying is, so when a person, the average person, looks and sees that pushback, mm-hmm. they start trusting that institution less. They trust the law less. They trust our laws. They trust our court system less. If the courts are going to let somebody shoplift, right, and, and, we're, and there's going to be no consequences. Mm-hmm. If the court permits nudity in front of, in, in front of uh, minors and they're not pushing back, if the courts permit, let's just say, um, nuns dressed as strippers in schools, yeah. Okay, and I mean, oh, it's, I find it distasteful, but that's what reality is showing us on the yeah. news now. If we're if if and if people are watching this and saying the courts are permitting that that's the norm, if you're against that, if you if you feel like no, it's not healthy for society, for children, for anybody, you're going to trust the law and the justice system less and less and less the more it happens. Okay, I mean. I understand what you're saying. Okay. That is a recipe for utter, at some point in time in the future, if it continues, a lawless society in total fucking chaos. I'm just processing. Sorry. No, no. I I, I think... So, so Rock, when you're talking about the justification of shoplifting, right? Mm -hmm. Um. That's what I've heard has been the argument for this, right? That that's why it's been allowed. That's why it's been decriminalized, right? No, I'm not saying that's why. I'm just saying I'm giving a specific example. No, I'm no, no. I understand across the board. But but what ends up happening is, is it's it what what's really happening is the removal of consequence of aberrant behavior, mm-hmm. right? And so across mm-hmm. the board, we're 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 looking the other way, mm-hmm. right? And what's ended up happening is we have basically i think what eric's pointing to is we've got a culture now that's filled with basically pe- petulant children that are just out doing whatever the hell they want to mm-hmm. do i got in a car accident the other day mm-hmm. we're on a, and a on a road with a 50 mile an hour speed limit one of the cars had to be going at least 80 or 85 miles an hour jesus okay and the other one was on my ass as i was getting off the the, the exit ramp i was doing 50 in a 35 yeah and the guy was tailgating me Okay, and he cut in front of the guy to go in eighty, and all of a sudden, the both cars exploded. Like, Holy shit! You no, know, it, was, it was it was it was unbelievable, and it was just two people completely disregarding mm-hmm. the agreed upon social norms. That's because that's what laws are. Laws are dynamic, right? Correct. Yes. Right. Exactly. And yes. so they're agreed upon social norms. Correct. So instead of changing the law, what they're doing is just saying, "Fuck you, law. We're just going to go do what we want to do because we think so because it's been those bad old." old white guys well, created I, the law. And I think well, there's more and more of that as each yeah. year goes by. Yeah. Goes but by. We, also, we also have to look at it from, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm taking this from an objective standpoint. Like mm-hmm. We're talking about laws and we're not going to trust laws. Do, do you always, you just said you broke the law. Yeah, all the right? time. So it's like there are laws that we choose that we abide by or not abide by. So it's... Well, here's the difference though. So I, I will, and I tell everybody this, I, I'm a notorious speeder, mm-hmm. okay? So I will break the law. Okay. And I will accept the consequence as soon as I 
I get busted by it. Okay. So, and it's happened a dozen times <laughs> okay. that I was speeding and I see the lights behind me. I just pull over. He won. It's a game. Yeah, I, I, okay. I understand that completely. And, and that's, that's what I'm saying. So it's like it, the argument we're making is we're going to have this lawless society. I don't disagree with you. I think I think there is. But I think we already selectively choose the laws we comply with and not. The three of us in this room do not follow every law. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we we decide what laws we think we should follow and not follow. Other people make different choices, mm-hmm. and we're saying those choices do not align with our values. Absolutely, right? Mm-hmm. But, the, that, but the difference, I think, though, Rocco, is mm-hmm. we will accept the consequence of those of breaking the law and sure. getting caught. Yeah, these other people don't. Well, that, that and I agree with that. It's it's the lack of accountability in society. Yeah. This is the problem. But again, I don't think it's across the board. I think it's in places that are run by people that lack accountability and responsibility. I think if you go to a a state that's well run and they're like, no, shoplifting There's is like a fucking six crime. Of those. <laughs> like you're gonna go to jail for that. Like that's yeah. different. If you if you go to a, a place that percent. is run by, so it's not. I don't think it's across the board. It's in places that are run by people that have that same lack of accountability. Okay, so, so what you're speaking it, about, what's it's missing a trend, though. Well, it is a trend, but what he's really pointing to is a mm-hmm. real opportunity and a real call to action is there is a need for leadership. Yes. Th- that's really right. what's yes. missing is leadership, right? Yes. And and there's going to be – and the leadership can no longer be this autocratic style of leadership. You know, do as I say, not as I do kind of thing because that's the root mm-hmm. of the problem, okay? Yes. That's we've had so many leaders, mostly in corporate America, but through politics and everything else, and families and institutions that have been the do as I say, not as I do guys, mm-hmm. and it's it's you know taken away all their credibility, all the trust you've talked about. Mm-hmm. But if you look at places that are working, there's leaders that have stepped up, and organizations. There's organizations that are thriving. Mm-hmm. There's a ton. I, I could give you a list of probably a hundred small organizations that are thriving. One of them is the Coza Law Group, beca- mm-hmm. strictly because of leadership. So what the, the the secret to all of this is creating the a, a, a conversation from leadership that has the vision and shares the values mm-hmm. and identifies what's it going to take and and is fully responsible for the role of leader. Mm-hmm. And that's a big deal. And the thing I think, you know, the thing you pointed to, to Eric, is one of the things we've been doing over the last at least 20 years is anytime there's a societal problem, government tends to grow. Mm-hmm. This country was not created so that we had this massive bureaucratic well, government. Well, we're conditioned as a public now to look to government first. Yeah. Whereas... Mm-hmm. Like, Decades, you know, a couple decades ago, three or four decades ago, we may not have been quite in that mode. No, and, you know? and I, I think what we've got to do is is get away from the centralized government mentality mm-hmm. and look first to family, to God, to the community, to the community leaders. Mm-hmm. You know, and there has to be a pushing down. I mean, one of the things one of the things I think that that Trump did successfully mm-hmm. was during COVID, he started governors got a lot more, a lot more. Uh, 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 power mm-hmm. and they, now you're seeing they should have more power exactly they mm-hmm. should be because that's mm-hmm. the whole idea of a republic mm-hmm. uh, you know mm-hmm. and the federalist mm-hmm. papers and all that but but you know that's one of the things that happened and now you see these states where there's these these governors and what you're talking mm-hmm. about there's some states that are really well run mm-hmm. and there's mm-hmm. other states like california and illinois mm-hmm. that are just mm-hmm. a shit show yeah illinois right now burglary statistics in illinois are up 200 percent over last year mm-hmm it's well, that's, that's that's my argument, right? And you know what's going to happen? Someone's going to break into someone's house and get ventilated, mm-hmm. and then it, there's going to be a riot because some kid got blown away because mm-hmm. he broke into some guy's house who had a loaded handgun and decided to blow so the guy away. It's the lack of responsibility in society. Yeah. I mean, this is what it all really boils down to when you yeah. think about it. And, and to, your, to both your points about the government intervening. So you're talking about the point where, like, where these – abhorrent behaviors in front of kids right Mm -hmm. when when it's like that's wrong the government comes in and says well no it's a right you can do so that that's the problem we have government is starting to govern social norms yeah like social norms are established by society and by the community government has now stepped in and said we will determine the social norms because this this group of people is louder than this group they are egregious this is the new social norm Mm -hmm. this is cool to do Mm-hmm. And that, but but you're also seeing, I think, people waking up and pushing back. Yeah. Look at all the sports shit that's going on. Like, I think people are getting tired of this. Like, men competing in women's sports. Let's mm-hmm. be honest. Like, that yeah. is fucking ridiculous. Yeah. It really is. And I think for a certain point in time, 
government was saying that's right that's we have the right to do that they have the right it's the new social norm i think people are starting to wake up and say that is not normal okay so did we for this let's just say this four or five year period of time did we just let a fringe group of people within our government create the new social norm and say it's okay is that what we did how did it happen I think it's been a I think it's been a problem in government. You keep giving government more power. They're going to do whatever the fuck they want. And if the people on the fringe are the loudest, the government's going to play to them. If you if you look if you it look certainly at, works on the left. Not really entirely sure that it really works with the, on the right, but it definitely works on the left. But, 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 if, if the right is in power and the crazy people on the right are the fucking loudest, they're going to get shit done for them as well. That's why I believe. Because 80% of us in the middle don't really give a fuck about much. Mm -hmm, right. Leave me alone. Let me do my job. Let me build my company. Let me live my life. I'm good. I'll pay my taxes. I'll help other people. Leave me the fuck alone. Let me do my thing, right? 80% of us really care about that. The government wants to exert control and the more control they have the better mm -hmm. so the way they control it is taking these people on the fringes that are really fucking loud and are the crazies that are like saying let's do all this crazy shit well these are the new norms so now we need to control all of this now and then it rouses us up in the middle and then it creates more discord and discontent and then it's just yeah. a whole fucking chaos so so maybe i'm just old now maybe i'm just <laughs> headed towards 60 so this may be this statement may be a reflection of this but i don't really think it is gentlemen the los angeles dodgers right the los angeles dodgers of the major league baseball association mm -hmm. had a special night this this year <laughs> where they honored a virtuous group of individuals who were I'm not sure the exact name, don't crucify me, but this was an actual night that was honored at the stadium mm -hmm. where they were there. Mm -hmm. There was special shirts given out. The group was a group of people who dressed as nuns, but were also men, men who were also transgender men. Or they transgender were also strippers yeah that's right <laughs> so this particularly and i would imagine it's probably not the not a not a huge group of americans mm -hmm. probably a rather small group of americans i'm mm -hmm. guessing just odds right odds mm -hmm. but a professional baseball team celebrated mm -hmm. on a special night mm -hmm. one of their 162 games mm -hmm. 82 at home mm -hmm. this group of people yeah now i'm telling you is it distasteful to me? I don't know if it's distasteful. It's just pretty fucking weird. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is that is so specific and so representative of such a small sliver mm -hmm. of our population. Mm -hmm. But we've elevated this oddness within society mm -hmm. and made it prominent. And when the rest of society, especially go all the way to the furthest on the conservative side, mm -hmm. look at this, how can they not now have a less or have more distrust of social norms? Baseball, Major League Baseball, my entertainment, my news network was broadcasting this. We're ebbing away trust mm -hmm. in our social norms, our bedrock institutions in this country because of the things that are they're being with being done to attack them within and i think that maybe when we die off it's not going to matter as generations die. i don't know but the trend is social norms in an accelerated pace the past decade are under fucking attack you, you know from which, my yeah. limited perspective okay what you're what you're pointing to is is kind of i think what i was talking about with this whole di thing mm -hmm. And and it's it's a function of the multiculturalism agenda, right? Mm -hmm. So anybody, if you're anybody but a straight white successful male, middle aged or above, okay, you're in, you're in one of these uh, marginalized groups, and then they've built allyship throughout them. So yes, there's four people that dress up like that are men that dress up like nuns and become strippers, but they it's like the union workers, right? Mm -hmm. So that means the the black community, every gay and lesbian person is going to align with them because they're part of their people because they're the alphabet people. Well, the, is that the same thing as like, you know, immediately um, 
you know, the gay and lesbian community within the country was immediately against Israel and absolutely for yeah. Palestine. That, that's that's exa- that's the same thing. It was just a decision that was made. Okay, we are the the yeah. country is basically for the it's in support of the Israeli people, but we're not going to be because we're the counterculture, right? And that's and although that's, the Muslim religion abhors our lifestyle and would rather kill us I than know. let us exist. Isn't that but remarkable? we're going to support them. Isn't that remarkable? I mean, like, it's... And, and that's the group... It's fucking nuts. That's the group think that's occurred. And that's what's going on. And that's... And, and what ha- what's happened is when you look at who the leadership is of that, you're looking at people like AOC, who was a pretty good bartender, and Ilan Omar, and Rashida Tlaib, who's a crazy person. But how are they getting enough attention... To warrant, here's the two questions I would ask. I'm gonna stick to the baseball thing yeah. for a second. Yeah. Did anybody ask why they did it, and did their revenue suffer afterwards? Like those would be the two questions I would ask the Dodgers. Yeah, I. I well, it's the same thing. Because again, like, we also have to remember we're capitalists by nature. Right, right. So the Dodgers did not do it to lose money. They did that night to get all of these other groups to come to baseball because that's where they are planted in a community right. where the majority of those types of people live. Hundred percent. So, it, so that was in my mind. Like 100%. I get it. Like it's we're saying that's against social norms, but that's also a capitalist play, in my opinion. But, but against the against the cost could be against. But they didn't lose. But they didn't lose money. They didn't lose. I money. don't know if they did. There was kind of a stir up. I don't know what the end results I don't think, were. I don't think we're they not, lost not money. Not in a position. No. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know the the Bud Light story. I found I thought was just really fascinating, and. It wasn't because who's a, who's a person that, Dylan Mulvaney or Mulvaney? Yeah, Dylan. Yeah, Mulvaney. I think yeah. his name is, or her name is. But I, that's not the part that got me. Mm-hmm. The part that got me was the VP of marketing for Anheuser Busch mm-hmm. and her video, yeah. talking about getting away from frat boys. Yeah, yeah. You that's know? your market. That is your market. Know yeah, your, exactly. Know your customers. They're your customers. Know your customers. And, and the thing is, first of all, it offended me personally, so I took great offense because I'm an old frat boy, <laughs> right? Yeah, I'm a but, frat boy too. Exactly, so. We're both frat boys, but <laughs> yes. but. But really, that's like like pissing into your customers yeah, right. and telling your fucking customers, fuck off, we don't well, need you anymore. It's also right. shows a level of arrogance there, too. Oh, my you God. Know? There was it's just like, a ton. Well, and, I mean, and you know what, what's interesting? The day that it happened, I went on LinkedIn, and I found her on LinkedIn. Yeah. And she went to like private school from K through 12, and then she went overseas, and then she went to Brown mm-hmm. and got an MBA from Harvard. And she's like never lived her life. She grew up in the, the Upper East Side of... of New York. So she's been like this pampered little girl like her whole life. And it goes up there and it makes this. And first of all, who hired her to put her yeah, in charge I don't, of Budweiser? I don't blame her. I blame those who put her in power. Yeah, who put her in power? Right. And well, to me, that was, that, that was such an easy fix. It was a layup, yeah. dude. Yeah, yeah, all you that had was to do like, I, we totally missed a mark on this. Yeah. We, we know who our customers are. Yeah. Let's fucking get Our back bad. To that. You know, we, we, My we, bad. People we were, were like, yeah, we get it. We fuck up. We get it. We're tr- you know, and it could have taken the whole thing with uh, Kid Rock and blowing yeah. it and turned it into a really cool thing. It could yeah. have been funny. But they right? doubled down on it. They doubled they did. down on it. They did. Well, they so doubled down money. on it. And, and, and if the irony is if it was played right, they could have kept both groups of potential Absolute customers. Fucking did, ha- did, absolutely. Did you see what they did yesterday? Budweiser. No, no. They signed up the guy from the UFC, Dana, what's his name? Oh, yeah. Dana, yeah, Dana White. White. Yeah. That guy's a master marketer. Yeah, he he okay. he he bought low, and he's now the primary sponsor for for Bud Light. He's going to resurrect oh. the brand. Yeah, oh, and he's I mean, going to resurrect their brand, and because UFC is, you know, that's an opportunity. Yeah, that's, he saw an yeah. opportunity, and I'm Absolutely. sure he got, you know, got for pennies on the dollar. You know, I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, but that's the move they have. See, to I, make. see, the funny part about that whole thing is, I don't, I don't really don't drink beer, and when I did drink beer, Bud Light was not was not on. No, my I didn't like. It wasn't on my horizon. No, but, but, fan. but I was aware of it. Mm-hmm. But I didn't looking at, looking at it going in. Yeah, you know, old white guy looking at it. My take on that was it didn't it didn't move the needle for me. And then when I started seeing all the pushback. I'm like, I don't really see the harm with the can. I no. get now. I try to put myself in the shoes of their loyal fan base. Yeah. I don't know what the message was or what the messaging was, but you're right, Rocco. If there would have been a good PR mm-hmm. arm within Anheuser Busch, yeah. they could have nipped that immediately. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. All parties would have been happy. Absolutely. And it wouldn't have been a yeah. thing. And I yeah. bet it they really wouldn't have been a thing. Mm-hmm. And I bet you, given how Dylan Mulvaney operates. Yeah. He or she would have turned that around and jumped on board and yeah, done absolutely because I mean, it could have been really funny. Yeah, but the absolutely. real I think the real danger is when that video of the the marketing woman 
got mm-hmm. went live. Yeah. And just the condensation. Oh, that, that's what killed them. Yeah. I, I think that, that, that I, 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 the didn't chance of dissipating at that yeah. point. No, that the did. arrogance of her and, and the, yeah. the, the just out of touch with the customer base. And what that tells me is the board of directors of that organization was completely out of touch with their business too. What I would say mm-hmm. is the following. The way that, sh- you know, I, I see only any problem with the can. I yeah, mean, I, none. you know, but what I do think was a miss on their behalf was mm-hmm. if they were going to do that. And I'm sure they appeared uh, over time. They have done that for certain celebrities. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think not in a big way, but they've taken yeah. their shots. If, if you, you, you obviously mm-hmm. know that if you give a can to that girl, mm-hmm. yeah. It's going to cause some level of discord oh, sure. amongst your client. You're Anheuser fucking Bush mm-hmm. in the heartland right. of America. I get it. But yeah, they should have foresaw that and maybe made that commemorative can part of a group of commemorative cans mm-hmm. that they would have got given social media influencers like, you know, tech reviews or sure. this one does fashion. There's just got to be a handful of, think about it, a handful mm-hmm. of influencers in the younger generation mm-hmm. they could have given cans out all at one time to them even right. five six seven ten whatever right. made a big deal about it it would have just been a blip on the horizon man yeah. it wouldn't have been so i think on their end too they didn't roll it out they misread their customer base that's no what they did. they misread their customer base <sighs> it's exactly what it, it was it was yes poor poor read of their customer base my argument is if you're going to be inclusionary, you did just the opposite. The, putting 10 commemorative cans out with different types of people yeah. would be more inclusionary. But, but, you know what I mean? But, like, but the other, pro- I, the other problem is, too, is they, 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 they overestimated the strength of their brand as well. They, you think? They, they thought. <laughs> but, but what I'm saying is like they, they, they overestimated that. Like, but, like, but, yeah, it's an American icon, but people couldn't give two fucks about it. If oh, they don't. it's light beer. And you, they have options. And if you piss on the people that buy it and are loyal fans and loyal drinkers, how they're like, I'll just go to the next light beer. It doesn't fucking matter. And we live in such a volatile society now with social media. I mean, you know, a spark turns into a bonfire. Mm-hmm. They could have, yeah. you know, it wasn't like it would go under, you know, it isn't like it was when, just dumb marketing. It was it wasn't dumb like marketing. Wendy's fucking on, uh, you know, Burger King back in 83 yeah. and all done through commercials. Right. right? I mean, the, the, the volatile nature of like day in, day out market share wasn't even measurable back then. And it happened so quick now. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it really happened quick. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It happens very fast. Do you feel that we're looking at each other? today with more distrust than we have in years prior do you think when people go shopping they look at you know people in in the mall on the street you know in a restaurant at a sporting event you think we're looking at each assuming they're strangers to us right Mm -hmm. but we're all in close proximity do you feel that we're looking at our fellow humans with more distrust today as in, like, concern if something bad's going to happen? Distrust that, yes, yeah, something bad might happen or une- something unexpected or something maybe humiliating or something or just something odd will happen, especially if you have young children with you. Do you, or do you worry more now? No. Because, again, I, th- I think the people always worry. I don't, I don't think it's any more or less now. I think... It just is like there. If I don't know a person, I'm always going to be. That's human nature. I'm protective of my children. If my children are with me, and I don't know someone. Like I'm not going to be like this. I'm going to go hug this person and high five them. Like I don't know them. Like I'm gonna. It's not a level of distrust. It's just there's no reason for me to trust them. Right. It's if if I don't know you and we're not acquainted, I have no reason to trust you. That's how I've always been. Once I get to know you. Then I'll give you my trust, and then you earn my like you said. Then you earn my confidence. But if I'm walking down the street, like, and I don't know, I have no reason to trust them. And that's always been the case. It's not changed at all. It's not like I, maybe I'm answering the question wrong. And I think I think your question is phrased in a way that, like, I'm looking at people with more skepticism now. Like they have bad intentions. Like, I don't think my view of people has changed. I think it's still the way it has always been. If I don't know you, I have no reason to trust you. Because you are a stranger to me. That's how I look at it. Yeah, I, you know, I, I've been pretty lucky. And I've always been a big dude. And 
and fuck somebody up. Yeah, well, back in the day. Now, <laughs> I'm, now I'm old and broken. But <laughs> join the but, club. You know, I, I didn't get fucked with much. Yeah, that's... you know, and so I don't have the perspective that a lot of people. I was I was talking to uh, a person this morning, who's a young woman, and she actually talked about this, Eric, and she does have concern. She was at a thing last week. Um, and, and she never had this thought, but she, you know, it was one of these things with the, about the Palestinian and, and Israeli war. It was one of these get together things and it was at a church and she was concerned that someone would come in and blow up the church, you know? And, you know, those things don't happen very often, but there's always, they're like preloaded from the media, mm-hmm. you know? So I think one of the hap, one of the things that's going on is the media is for, for fomenting fear. Mm-hmm around things like this Mm -hmm. that doesn't allow for open and honest communication about things because the thing she went to Mm -hmm. sounded like it was a pretty good idea but you know again it was it was fraught with this concern because there there was media attention and talking about this as a you know a target for terrorism or something you know and so i don't know i think there's a lot of there's a lot of fear in our kind of our cultural conversation Uh now when you look at like a lot of the media reports they're not talking about stuff that happened they're talking about stuff that can happen bingo and i think that's how many americans really sit and read that question read that statement in their head here's another piece that i don't know eric here's another piece this was which i think so i remember um reading either reading or watching a study they were talking about they showed criminals Mm -hmm. pictures of individuals and like who would you attack on the street and it was always the people that looked weak. Mm-hmm. Like if you're if you are confident, mm-hmm. the, the 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 kicker to that is just today I was reading something that the male ma- males in the United States our testosterone levels are twenty percent lower on average than it was thirty years ago. We are a softer society, so people are more fearful because I mean just the male side yeah. of society because we don't have the same hormones we used to, so we are filled with fear. So if you look weak and feel weak you are prone to be attacked so that's going to create that distrust to me it's like i don't give a fuck i'll handle myself like it is what it is like i just if you're a stranger cool like i don't know you i don't trust you i don't give a shit well you know have you noticed like in just in the last few years like in commercials on television or ads you see the depiction of men is not the, healthy. They're, they're squishy. Not yes. healthy. Yeah. At, at best. Yes. Right? Yes. And they're not, they're like, that's a wimpy looking. Look dude. at the dad look at the dad bod trend. Let, let's yeah. be let's be real. Like people were like, this is a trend. Like, hey, we want squishy dudes. Mm-hmm. Like that's the that's the in thing. It's like But do they really? I don't know. Like I well, don't you know, know. Here, I don't know, man. I don't know. I think, you know, because you you've got you know, one of the parts of the marginalized society is these women's liberation 3.0, which is this radicalized version of, of women's liberation. Mm-hmm. And so what they want is they want guys that are cucks that are basically going to do whatever they say mm-hmm. until they, well, I'm not even going to go there, but th- <laughs> there's, there's, there's a certain part of the market that they appreciate, but only for selective services, shall we say, right? Mm-hmm. It's a role. Sure. They're, 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 uh, their ultimate uh, goal is a complete role reversal. Yeah, exactly. And the removal of the quote-unquote patriarchy because every problem they have. But what they don't understand is everything that's been built up to this point mm-hmm. has been a function of the patriarchy and Western civilization. Yeah. Right, mm-hmm. and if you want to like get rid of that, then guess what's going to happen? You're going to have complete destruction of the infrastructure, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and and, and you're, you're seeing it from the go- from the government right now, but you're seeing it throughout. You know, there's this this this. That's why stuff isn't working. That's why when I when I talked in the very beginning about integrity, integrity mm-hmm. is workability. Mm-hmm. Integrity is creating structures that the systems can operate within. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's what leadership does. Mm-hmm. And and that's why the the solution I really think is a, a, a revolution in leadership and people really stepping up. And it's going to be different because it, it's going to be the guys that first of all they're probably pretty busy already. Mm-hmm. And and I'm not just talking about political leadership. I'm talking about culture and social and organizational leadership. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, look at yeah. for your organization, you're always looking for people to step up. Yeah, right. Always. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. You know. Yeah, it's it's almost um, it's almost like we're we have a built in timidity in today's yeah. modern society. Oh, that's a society. great word. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. look look at look at men. I mean, I'm just using our gender as 
the example like oh like, yeah look look at how weak men have become like coming up behind us like it it, it i mean when I read that, say it's like I get that. Like the testosterone level is, I think, twenty or thirty percent lower mm-hmm. on average, than, and that's because the food we eat, the processed foods, the soy-based products. There's so many things that are causing that, right? Mm-hmm. Like environmental things, but that's also causing things in society to go wrong. Like th- there are certain roles for men and women in this world, I believe. And mm-hmm. if you start softening men, you become a weaker society. I'm not saying men are the ones that hold up society. I think women are way stronger than men. Let me just put mm-hmm. that out. I truly believe that. I think women can handle things way better well, than we can. When it comes can. to pain, for sure. When it comes to pain, when it comes to emotion, I, I think yeah. I think they truly can. Like I right. mm-hmm. like I, I see like what my wife can handle. I see what women in my life can handle and, and people that I work with can handle. Like they are way stronger than us. But there are certain things that we are built to do. Yep. Mm-hmm. And if you start weakening us, which like to your point, built things in society mm-hmm. society starts to crumble yeah. and that's what we're seeing happen good times lead to weak men right and, and, and that's I th- where we are and part of it is we have yet to change so so we went through a uh industrial revolution around the mm-hmm. turn of the century right there was a reduction of the labor force in automotive and steel i mean you guys saw it here in pittsburgh right saw it in, in you know farm implements were built in chicago um, I, I don't think there's a farm implement plant in chicago anymore there's an engine there's several engine plants but no farm implement plants right so pittsburgh and chicago are great examples that used to have these very robust manufacturing and industrial job bases mm-hmm. and those are all gone Technology's changed the landscape. And those, technology, those jobs in general just don't exist anymore. Well, it, it, and that's part of what the strike is about, right? That's going on in the automotive industry mm-hmm. because of it, and, and and I was in the, I was involved in this stuff. Is the the whole productivity is measured by the reduction of labor hours, right? That's what mm-hmm. being productive is. If I can build this in ten hours and now I can build it in eight, I am now twenty percent mm-hmm. more effective, right? Mm-hmm. And I can reduce prices or increase profit, and that's the basis mm-hmm. of it. That's the way manufacturing. It, it was always drilled in my head. That was a way that manufacturing was going to thrive. I remember seeing my first lights out factory in nineteen eighty. No, eighty five. Mm-hmm. Completely lights out, like mm-hmm. ran on a zone for twelve hours a night. You know, mm-hmm. and here in the United States, right. And, and so, you know, and then there was always the pushback from the unions. Well, you can't do that because we're not going to have jobs. Jobs need to be pr- productive. And we have yet to figure out a way what happened with NAFTA is instead of actually creating it here, we outsource those jobs and that, that work, no which was all the engineering, mm-hmm. you know, all the product design, all that stuff. We outsourced it overseas. Mm-hmm. And it, you know. And we also became dependent in many and we became as de- well. Yeah. You know, and that's what happened. There was a, a, a mistake made that was short-term good, long-term devastating, mm-hmm. that we haven't adjusted to yet. And that gets into a lot of the stuff you're talking about mm-hmm. the the role of men. What is the role of men now? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. what's the statistics? In I just saw something was it blew me away. Something like close to sixty percent of the enrollment in colleges, four-year colleges now, is women. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. that's a big disparity. It is. You know, law school is has been for quite some time. Mm-hmm. Predominantly women. Yeah, you know, so these these intellectual and institutional roles are being, you know, foundational. Like the the people coming up, or there's a real good chance they're going to be women or minority or mm-hmm. something like that. It's not going to be the old white guys like us, right? Mm-hmm. Which is fine, but you know, you can't discard half the population, which is yeah. what we've done. Well, and we've we touched on it recently, Rocco and I just yeah. looking at some numbers what the military is going through with recruitment oh. issues now and. With um, you know, we, we we yesterday we jostled around. Uh, there there are there's a statistic that, that I don't have in front of me now, but mm-hmm. a study was done last year that a good portion, um, based upon BMI, which is another yeah, conversation. It's yeah, it's a whole yeah, conversation. Yeah. But there, but for sake of discussion, mm-hmm. there appears to be significant issues with permitted obesity mm-hmm. within the current military, probably because they they need the bodies. Yeah, I mean. Mm-hmm. So the idea of it, of our fighting men and women, mm-hmm. but our fighting men going into the dangerous places to do dangerous things, yeah. you know, we can argue testosterone and all that stuff, but these are hard men doing hard work yeah. keeping mm-hmm. America safe. That right. used to be a mantra, mm-hmm. right? You know, I'm not, and it's not the exclusion of women. It's just that was a mantra for mm-hmm. decades, and mm-hmm. we were okay with that because yeah. we wanted to be safe, right? Mm-hmm. 
I just wonder, you know, over the next decade or two, what our military will actually look like. Well, if you if you look at the leaders of our military and their policies, it's you know, Is, are those policies being forced? Because I I was just also sharing with Rocco yesterday how much faith I have, regardless of what party is in there. I, the faith of the the general brain trust of these admirals and these generals. I mean, they're military career people, and I put I would probably have more faith in them than our politicians. But mm-hmm. but they're obviously. They're obviously working at the pleasure of the rolling politicians yeah. and the policies that they are are uh, instructed to administer. So my brother just retired from thirty years in the Air Force, and you know I asked him about that, and he says, you know, up to the level of you know the colonels, those guys are still all pretty rock solid. He goes, you when you get into general officers, that's when it gets really political, you know. Mm. So, so the officer schools and all that has certainly changed over the yeah. the decades. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I just I, I got so much respect for. I mean, and, and this is not I'm not diminishing my view of our military right. at all. It's just a changing view, and I just wonder. But, but still, you know, even when you look at like Delta Force and the Green Berets and the the Navy SEALs, those are the baddest human beings on the planet. Mm-hmm. You know, sure. and those guys are really well trained, and that hasn't deteriorated yet. But if things continue to erode as they do, and the fish starts to stink from the head. It's only a matter of time before it gets that way. And then those guys really become, if they're not trained and they go into situations like that, then they're just getting up for slaughter. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah, I had um, Colin Bully on about a year ago. We sat down here, and he's uh, from my hometown, actually, from Coriopolis. Mm-hmm. And he, uh, I think, don't, don't be mad at me now. I don't have all the details in front of me, but he was a very decorated mm-hmm. Army Ranger. And he actually trained the very first female ranger oh, okay and mm. he talks the story about how he was dead against it in the beginning and mm. by the time that ranger when she was done mm-hmm. he he was completely his his whole demeanor about how mm-hmm. wrong he was mm-hmm. and how outstanding she performed you know it, but but the, it was there was a lot of pressure in the beginning yeah. like mm-hmm. you know but the point was they are hard individuals doing a very hard job and thank god they are there mm-hmm. do you know what's great about that though eric so there's a standard that needs to be achieved that your guy has, yeah. right? And you know, you gotta be this high to be on the ride. And mm-hmm. what he did in that training was brought that woman along so she met those standards. Mm-hmm. And so she turned and, into and she and earned was, it all the and way. And she through. earned it all the way. Yep. That, mm-hmm. See, that's She's what I think that's what I think is equity. I don't care about the color of someone's skin. Of course I don't not. care what they sleep with. Mm-hmm. I don't care what gender they are. Can you do the job? Yeah. We need to have a meritocracy, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Not equal outcome correct Mm -hmm. equal opportunity and that's that's the key to all of this that's where it can work and if 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 a woman can come in and kick ass and meet those standards and bring the emotional intelligence with it then she can actually create a new standard that actually makes a better version of that right absolutely because so you know i i've done this you know you know the the imx i I do this this leadership profile right unequivocally i could take just a from looking at the thing in, in three seconds, I could tell you if it's a woman or a man without looking at their name. Right. And what it is is women consistently are much more self-aware than men. Okay. Mm-hmm. Consistently, because guys are always outwardly focused and doing that. Women begin from the inside, then they go out, and they're they're much and they're also tend to be more balanced mm-hmm. overall. And and yeah, anytime I you know I, I can almost I'm probably about ninety percent correct on it. You know, mm-hmm. and it, it's interesting. So yeah, women have a lot they bring. This is not about men are good and women mm-hmm. are bad or anything like that. It's not. What is bad is when men try to become women, and and mm-hmm. and, and take on female characteristics, which is what mm-hmm. Rocco you're talking about. Yeah. That's where the squishiness comes from. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. and and man, I, and I tell you, that's a phenomenon that I I if you had told me in the '80s that mm-hmm. we were going to head in that direction in a big way in society, I would never have seen that coming because. Mm-hmm just have no recollection of viewing the world that way yeah no i mean the world is different now i mean that's, that's just that's i wonder how, i wonder how much of that is you know you know 60 percent of the families have single you know oh i think it's a big part of you it. know where yeah. where the young boys are raised by women only. and they're only. only and they're raised by a collection mm-hmm. of women only and they there is no father figure or there there is no male figure to show them how to I, I've got a nephew mm-hmm. who was raised like that. And he literally, you know, he came over and he, he spent some time with my son. And 
we were going somewhere and he had to, he had to pee. I said, well, just pee up against a tree. Went, I can't pee up against a tree. And the kid would sit to mm-hmm. pee, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Well, it's like, conditioning. It's he's like eight learned. or nine years old. What you learn. Right. But, but here's the thing. I was raised by my mom and my, my aunts and grandmother. Yeah. And I turned out fine. It's always, so, there's always you know, exceptions. So though. again, but 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 again, I think I think what is he? Am I the exception or is he the exception? I think again, I think we're there's yeah. a lot of diff- there's a lot of different Great pieces point. to it. I mean, See, and I think that's something a perspective you could bring. Yeah, you know, because that's the quote unquote acceptable excuse. Mm-hmm. And you know, and I there's probably some code in there that you broke that you understood. I just you I know? just had the really strong female figures in my life. Yeah, that you know that I learned respect. I learned mm-hmm. certain things, and I just. I am who I am. And it was, I wasn't told to be a certain way. I was just told that whatever I did, I do the best at it. Yeah. Be the best at it. Whatever you choose to do, just be the best. I, the, the thing that I've learned through my friendship with Rocco, and I, I mean, I, I mean I'm, I'm being totally honest, it's not patronizing, is mm-hmm. that Rocco has, has shown me the concept of proportionality in mm-hmm. society. Because mm. I... Um, was like I think most people, you know, I get inflamed by little things I see and see here and there, you know, and I and I lear- I've learned through age probably mm-hmm. to temper my mm-hmm. re- and then asking the next question and the next yeah. question. But what I love about the way you think, because mm-hmm. I I think I do some of this, I'd like to do more of it. Mm-hmm. But like you, what you just said earlier, is that the exception or, or is it reversed? Yeah, you see, you're always looking at what might be happening, might truly be. On the face of it, horrid, mm-hmm. but also represent just a very small right. speck of what really is invisible behind that, which mm-hmm. is yeah. everything else. Right. Yeah. Well, we don't do mean, enough yeah. of that in society in general. Well, this is. I mean, we literally, <laughs> we we literally had this discussion last Thursday. We a couple of us went out uh, before um, before this charity basketball game from the firm. We went out. And we ha- we were having drinks. We were talking and um, it. Emma said to me, she said, I, I would hate, if I was your wife, I would jump off a bridge. And, I, and it was because, I, and it was because Sorry, the, way, the, way I, the way I argue, she said, because I, cause you always ask, you answer questions with questions. <laughs> I said, and, and Matt said the same thing. And I said, that's right, because I need to understand all the pieces to it. Mm-hmm. You can't come to me and ask me something. I'm going to ask you questions until I know exactly what you want to, what, what you're asking me. Mm-hmm. And I want to know. So this situation, like we're t- having this discussion, okay, well, the way I look at it is, Who's the exception, right? Because we both were raised in the same way, yeah. and we're pointing one way, but we can also point the other way. So the, my question is, who are we in this room saying the exception is? Because I can't make a statement right. or articulate a response until I know what the playing field is. So if we think he's the exception or I'm the exception, that's just how my brain operates. It's just I have to know that I have to know the parameters. So in that vein, mm-hmm. um, our last segment here, let me ask you about back to the trust issue, mm-hmm. asking the next question. Mm-hmm. So two schools of thought here. We're, we're so quick to join a team. We're so quick to fly our flag and make a decision based upon initial input at times mm-hmm. where we could say, oh, shit, man, we should be. We we should, we we need to ask that next question and maybe the third or second or third question to really vet it out before we make a decision. But we also had that part of us that might not trust anything mm-hmm. and asks an incredible amount of questions instead of maybe accepting what should have kind of been a kind of a bedrock truth, right? So we're in a weird maneuver now. Like like case in point like why is the concept of conspiracies on the web on social media why is that such a big deal now i think there's an we, we all have it's fodder but is it really is it derived out of the fact that we we don't trust most of what we ingest we don't i don't think we take the initiative to investigate it truly further ask the appropriate questions we're still pretty reactionary i think but it's interesting like do are we in a position where Maybe we are asking questions, but we're asking questions about the wrong stuff. And the things we should be asking the next question on, we're just taking is it's how our view, our team looks at it, or how the person of our own ilk views it, and we just go with it. Are, are we spending time asking the wrong questions, or are they the right questions but the wrong subject? <laughs> uh, that's, that's such an arbitrary question. Because it, because but look at saying, the output though, but the chaos around right, us. Right, but what, what I'm saying is, you're saying, are we asking the right questions? The right questions to who? 
Because again, like, so, as so, to what we believe. But, but what I'm saying is, so we we talk, take, take conspiracy theory, theories, right? It's not in my mind. It's not crazy. It's if I don't think it's a conspiracy theory. If I logically am coming to a conclusion by the questions I ask, mm -hmm. right? That that to me is not a conspiracy theory. That is just a theory because it's conspiracy because it doesn't align with your beliefs. Mm -hmm. Like that's the true mm -hmm. essence of conspiracy theories. Mm -hmm. It's you believe the sky is blue. I'm like, well, wait a minute. Is it blue? And I start asking questions, and I come to a different conclusion. And if it doesn't align with you, that's conspiracy theory. Or if you are in disagreement with a traditional authoritarian, authoritarian view that we've lived under or have been told in mass, yeah. mm -hmm. and we break down or take the opposite view of that, mm -hmm. We can take it on face value. Oh, it's you know. I don't believe anything in life should be taken on face value. I'm just going to put that out. But there. how much of our society do we maneuver today? Uh, how think of all the inputs that we get on a daily mm -hmm. basis, and what the average person believes to be true based upon the first input they get, and they move on, and they assume that that's a truth, and they go on with it. Well, I, I think a lot. I think a lot of people do that, but I, I don't. That's not how I operate. Like I, 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 I know it's not how I, I try I think, not to either. But I think a lot of this, the public does that. Might, what do you think, Mike? Well, you know, it, when you ask that question, you talk about it. It's something that Rocco said, but it's also that Einstein quote: "If I have an hour to solve a problem, I spend fifty-five minutes defining the problem mm -hmm. and five minutes on the solution." Right. And I think we're so apt and so desirous of coming to quick easy solutions Bingo. Mm -hmm. yeah, that right. we don't actually really inquire as to what is the problem. Correct. And and we're so eager to prosecute and persecute as opposed as opposed to first define. And and I think that's what it is. And so, you know, it's funny I talk to so I view myself as a pure libertarian. And so libertarians have been thrown over in the trash heap with the trumpets, right? <laughs> and and so uh, and, and I find myself in conversations with a whole bunch of progressive all the time, mostly because of what I do in the environment I'm in. And, you know, I tell them all the time, listen, we're standing for the same thing. You just, you know, and our boogeyman is the same. It's just the way you go about it and the way I mm -hmm. go about it two different ways. Mm -hmm. and, and that's all it is. It's, I think, ult and I think that's ultimately the conversation that needs to be had. What is it? What is it? Do we want this country and this culture and our communities to really look like? What is it? That's the first yeah, question yeah. I ask you all the time. What is it you want your organization to look yeah, like? Right. And then define that, and then build that. It's right. that simple, yeah. and it it's simple, not easy, right, yeah, it, it, <laughs> Mister Coase? It's yeah, not yeah, easy. No, it's, not, it's, it's, <laughs> it's 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 simple. It's it's not complex, but it's difficult. Yeah. And in, in the way I look at it, to your point, like I would a thousand percent agree with that quote. Like we sh we don't spend enough time defining the problem. Yeah. We and that is, and that is why when people get, that's why people get frustrated with me because mm -hmm. I will spend a fucking hour asking questions to understand like what is the actual issue, mm -hmm. and people just want to get to a solution. I'm like, well, that's not what is the real issue. Like we have to really dive deep, and it may be fifty questions that I have to ask because I'm not going to give a solution if I don't clearly understand the problem. I think about our politics today, Rocco. Well, right. That, oh, I mean, what they see on television about how these people maneuver and in, their bombastic – Every time I see a microphone, it's a bombastic angle on in something. In 40-second yes. news clips, right? Right. And that's not critical thinking of any no. kind. That's not even the attempt at critical thinking. No. M most people in this world don't want to critical think. They want to live an easy, comfortable life, right? This, this is why there's something called the 1%. The one percent in society are the ones that want to critical think and want to question everything, and that's why they become the one percent, mm -hmm. right? If you and I truly believe, it, if you want to be successful in this world and become part of the top, you've got to ask the fucking questions that no one else is willing to ask. Mm -hmm. You've got to do the hard work that no one else is willing to do. You've got to spend that time for those fifty-five minutes defining the problem you're trying to solve. That is the most uncomfortable thing. If someone comes to me with it's a problem, just a self problem. But, but but think about it. If someone comes to me with a problem, for me to grill them for a fucking half hour, that's uncomfortable for me and them. But mm -hmm. that's what I'm going to do so I can make sure I'm solving the right problem. Well, that's Rocco, do you know what you just said is so brilliant? Because what we have to do is we have to find a way to exist for an extended period of time in ambiguity and uncertainty mm -hmm. so that we can actually get to the rock of what it is. Everyone Correct. has got this addiction to wow. certainty. That's yeah. good. That's you exactly know? right. That's exactly right. And, and well, we, that, we lust after it. Mm -hmm. oh, we, we, lust, oh, we lust after certainty. Oh, absolutely. 
You know, shit, there, there's 800 numbers where you call a guy up and he gives you the pick so you can put money on and gamble because it's a certain pick. Mm-hmm. It's such bullshit, yeah, right? right? We exactly. know it's bullshit. It, it's complete bullshit. Right. But what you just pointed to, that mm-hmm. is your superpower, dude. Your ability to sustainably stay in uncertainty, mm-hmm. trusting yourself, yeah. mm-hmm. and trusting your process that you can come out of it on the other end. And yeah, it's all going to work out. That's- yeah, I mean that's how I that's how I yeah. live. That's how I it's operate. A, it's, a, because, well, it's, yeah. a, it's a personal belief structure, and yeah. I think and I think that I think if you say personal belief structure to the average person, they will know what that is, mm-hmm. but they don't really understand what it means, and they certainly most folks don't want to go through the process of mm-hmm. having to create that. Same thing, mm-hmm. personal yeah. philosophy, the same thing. No yeah. one wants to think further. What do I actually believe? Yeah, because it might be yeah. uncomfortable. Yeah, I mean, no one wants to ask the questions. Like that's the problem. Like no one, like I'm, I'm com- to your point. Like I'm completely fine being uncomfortable all the time. Like mm-hmm. I live for that. Like I don't. If I'm comfortable, I make myself uncomfortable just to be a fucking asshole. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know. But it's just because see, that, I see uncertainty as an opportunity. Yes, it absolutely. It absolutely you is know? an opportunity, in my opinion, because most people can't maneuver in uncertainty. So if yeah. you find a way to maneuver, the world is yours for the taking. Mm-hmm. I truly believe that in business, in life, in relationships, in anything, most people cower in uncertainty. Well, we seek comfort. So, so ironically, the reason why I think Trump is still on our horizon mm-hmm. after everything that has gone on in his world mm-hmm. is that he deals with uncertainty he thrives in uncertainty oh, yeah, exactly he right and, 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 and he will, hate him it, you know he the, he, he thrives in it yes and mm-hmm. he's undeterred exactly, exactly. he exactly he right. actually lusts for it mm-hmm. and he creates it because what he does is he creates all this shit storm so that he's the only one who knows where he's going mm-hmm. that's, and, good, that's exactly right that's exactly right you know and you know everybody mm-hmm. everybody hates the guy but i actually when you look at his policies and you look at when he's really engaged, the guy's mm-hmm. a pretty smart dude. Yeah, you, you he's know. just a, he's just a social nitwit, mm-hmm. you know, and and stirs up way more shit than he needs to. Mm-hmm. If he would be focused, he'd be awesome. Mm-hmm. But, Absolutely, but I don't think we're ever going to see a focused yeah. Donald Trump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe we're going to give him some gummies or something. It's like you know? uh, it, it's it really it, it is it, do, it does come down to where your priorities are and what we should you get, want with the president. It's you like, should you get really Donald want... Trump on this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> come on, be, Donald. That it would be, be awesome. But but to, but to your point, I think I think if you if you take all this shit away from him, yeah, he's a brilliant strategist. Yes. Like mm-hmm. he really is. Like he he to your point. Like I and I've watched him for years. Like as a businessman, I read all his. Books. Oh, he manipulates the media like no he, other and politician and I've and ever that, seen. And that's the point that like I've he, ever seen. He creates the uncertainty because he thrives in that environment. He's not afraid of it. That's ex- that, that's exactly right. Yeah. So so and, and that's how I look at like if you are un if you are not afraid or unfazed by uncertainty, it's very easy to maneuver life. Because there's always going to be uncertainty. And then what he does, he takes it to that next level. He's like, I'm going to create the uncertainty. Mm-hmm. So I'm the only one that knows how to navigate it. And he's 10 steps ahead of people. Yeah. I mean, if you if you look at, like, I went down a rabbit hole, like, of politicians and all this shit. And, like, coming up to, like, all these things that happened for the past 200 years of just how all these political families are related in one way or another. Mm-hmm. And then Trump came in and blew it all up. Yep. And it's like... It's like fuck. That's why they wanted this dude out. Like it yeah. all made sense to me, and it's like he created uncertainty that all these people did. They were brilliant politicians, but they could not operate in the uncertainty he well, created. Well, he they owned the system. Yeah. It was their system, right? And then, right. but what I'm saying is, but if you are if you are an intelligent person and you know how to maneuver life, you that uncertainty should not scare you. You should be able to maneuver through it. They mm-hmm. were so they he came in and just boom threw a bomb of uncertainty and they're like fuck we don't know what to do we just gotta get him out like their solution was remove him mm-hmm. not maneuver through it not figure out a way through it their mm-hmm. solution was yeah just take him out well we had to kill him yeah you got to kill him because otherwise yeah you know, and they're not going to physically kill him because that that would make him a murder oh, right just just kill every idea he's had. well it was mm-hmm. so obvious to me yeah. that halfway through his term. That they were trying to, I, I thought I knew it was going to be in vain, but I thought they were going to try to put so much stress on him as an individual based upon personal attacks. Mm-hmm. It started that, the that first may, weekend. Maybe after. the idea yeah. was to have him cause have a heart attack. That's yeah. what I used to think. That's the way oh. they thought they would get him. 
He's yeah. not going to have a heart you know? attack. That dude's a fucking bull. He's not going, <laughs> dude. He's not going anywhere. I mean, let's just be real. Like, guy, well, they're trying a, to put him in jail right now. He has now. three yeah. million lawsuits against him. <laughs> criminal charges everywhere, and the dude's just still giving. Stump He's making speeches. jokes. He's making He's jokes. Still do you see? Do you see what he did today? No. So they they brought a guy in to be the speaker, and he shit the bed. And then he brought another guy in, and he puts out this treat, this this uh, tweet or, or X, whatever. Mm-hmm. And he says, and he's, he does his typical bullshit, and he and he and he uh, follows up with, "Let's just get it done now." And he goes, <laughs> "Love DJT," like <laughs> he's just he's a fucking crazy person. And you just told me it got done, right? It yeah, just, he, got, he got elected today. Yeah, you got, he got, I think I think I just speaker? saw something yeah. that got elected. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, he didn't go, he was nominated. He was elected. They did the actual vote. He yeah, I think, the, I think that's what I what I read. Yeah, that was but, a guy from uh, Louisiana, Louisiana Johnson, yeah. Mike Johnson. Yeah. But I think the best thing I've seen Trump do in the past two weeks was the speech he gave in California about sustainable military. Mm-hmm. He's like, they're talking about having sustainable <laughs> weapons, sustainable tanks, like eco-friendly tanks. He's like, we're bombing people. We're blowing people up. <laughs> He's like, who cares? But but uh, but we, we have less emissions. He's like, you're killing people. You're blowing people up, but we're worried about emissions? And I'm like, to me, it's like, that's how well, crazy we've well, gotten. That, yeah. yeah they, they, I think it's crazy that there's rules of war. There's rules of engagement. I think I, if you're not for the boxing match, there's rules. UFC fight, there's rules. But rules in war. Well, I, I understand. You, I understand why there's rules of engagement in war. Like I, I understand that. Oh, and on principle, you, you would love to see innocents not get killed. I absolutely agree with that. But if, but you're, if you're telling me that, I believe any Islamic fundamentalist government going to war against a non-Muslim mm-hmm. is going to is is going to engage in rules of. Conduct. I, I don't believe it. I think the best book on war mm. is the art of war. Mm-hmm. If you're, yeah. if, if you, if in your charter of an organization, whatever you want to call it, charter, mm-hmm. biblical law, whatever, your stated written law of why you exist is to wipe another group off of the map, mm-hmm. out of existence. Mm-hmm. You're probably not going to engage in. You're not going to win them over. That's going to yeah, have yeah, yeah. rules but, but, to but, it. But but, but here's what you have, here's here's the the bigger piece. I think you're not looking at like. They are the smaller party in it. So if they don't play by the rules, we don't have to play by the rules. And then we'll level the whole fucking in place. In theory, you're right. But I'm saying yeah. like, that's but that's why I think that's why I think there are rules in place. Like there are again, society. We have if we didn't have a speed limit, we'd all drive however the fuck we wanted and there'd be right. complete chaos, right? Mm-hmm. right? Same thing. There's rules of engagement when it comes to wars. Countries have come together and said, hey, if we have disagreements and if we get into a fucking war, like this is the shit we but, but, but see. I think you're collapsing. It's like hundred feet. I understand. It. It's I insane. understand what you're saying. I we're gonna bomb the shit out of you, but we're not gonna like bomb this neighbor because there's a bunch of civilians over there. I, I understand that, but but I also understand why they're in place. Yeah, in a in a, in a utopian world, sure. I don't, I don't even think but, utopian. I, I think just just a society of nations where we understand wars can happen, but we're trying to prevent as much of that as possible, and we're trying to prevent civilian casualties, but we understand that war happens, and if we're going to go to war, it's going to be because of these reasons, and we're going to try and follow this so we don't blow the fucking human race off so, the so, planet. No, no, I, but, but you're talking about a reactionary stance to war as opposed to an initiator, Me- meaning like if we initiate the war, if mm-hmm. some country initiates the war, the initiating country is really not inclined if they if they if they think so little of the opponent that they will send bombs or go and mm-hmm. kidnap people or do whatever they do to expect them to somehow engage in such in a certain conduct for the engagement of war is kind of like naive, isn't it? Did Hamas really want to engage in? I mean. Is kidnapping babies and slitting their throats, how is that in congruence with a conduct of war? But that's not war. That's a terrorist attack. You're conflating the terms. You're, conf- you're conflating the terms. Like a war is a declared by a government. War is declared. If I de- if a government declares war, there are rules of engagement in place. That's a terror attack. So you're saying like the Geneva Convention. Yeah, like, the, like, like we ha- the president has to declare war. Congress has to approve it, right? Then we say we are a country at war. These are our rules of okay. engagement. If there's a terrorist attack, that, there's no rules in a ter- it's a terrorist attack. They could okay. cause a country to engage in war, but a terrorist attack is purely that a terrorist attack. They're two totally separate things. So wouldn't you wouldn't you say okay? So what about the people that say one person is terrorist is another person's freedom fighter? Isn't it really subjective based upon who's viewing it? It's subjective as to the not person. to me it's not subjective. Subjective, subjective saying- to the person, but but we've agreed what a war is. 
We agree. Co- like, as, con- we? as countries, you think Hamas has agreed to that? But, 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 but Hamas is not a country. Hamas is a group. They're the government of, of Palestine. Palestine. But, 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 the, but, the, but, but, are they? Are they truly the government? Yeah, they were elected. Uh, but, yeah. but, but, are they? Are they part of the rules of engagement? I, I don't and know. That, the structure I, I don't, of I don't know. Again, so again, we're know. talking about things we shouldn't be talking about because none of us right. really have the facts. Right. Let's just be honest. So yeah. I think. None of us are military people, and we're saying. I just no. think. I just think rules of engagement. I understand why they're in place because a war is declared by a country and a government. A terrorist attack is something completely different. I, and, I, and I don't disagree with anything you say in terms of how we how reality is. Mm-hmm. But when I take a hundred step look at the whole thing, it's almost like a fucking board game. I mean, you're telling me, all right, well, country A is going to declare war on country B, and but there's rules, so you can only bomb. And kill like these people because there's only like ten percent civilians, but over here there's eighty percent civilians. So we, you know, they're off limits. Like, how do you set but, that but, structure? But, you you want to you want to pl- pummel them into submission and take their shit. Okay, That's but, what but, most wars are started over. Right. But okay. But but what if what if I'm a city in Pittsburgh and I fucking hate the township and I want to blow them to oblivion. <laughs> But I'm saying, like, you're, you're, you, you can take this example in different ways, right? There are rules in place for certain things. We have rules against murdering our neighbor. We're talking about taking up arms and shooting and killing other people. Okay, that's what murder is, right? Yeah. Okay, so so what I'm, what I'm saying is you're saying there shouldn't be rules. There shouldn't be rules when it's war. I'm saying it makes an, it's insane for me to believe that there is a, a rule book, a book of rules that if... Poland decides they're going to go to war with Norway tomorrow, which will never happen. But let's say they did. Mm -hmm. They're pissed off at each other. Let's say Poland wants their oil, right? And they unprovoked. Poland goes in there and starts tearing them up. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous for me to assume that they're going to take the Geneva Convention or any engagement rule book and start like structuring their strategy based upon what's outlined in there. It's insane for Mm -hmm. me to assume that that should happen. Well, again, you're making an assumption that that's how the rules work. None of us know how the rules work. If it's an unprovoked attack, do the rules apply? We don't know. None of us sitting in this room can articulate that. Okay, so that. if there's a rule book, then rules have to be adjudicated in some capacity. So R- who R- does that? R- rules of in- rules of engagement. Like the, like I understand, like I've talked to people in the Navy, rules of engagement on a battleship. There's certain ways they can cross a competing country's ship. There are certain things they can and can't do. Okay. Because, the, because if they don't follow these things, it's deemed an act of war. Okay. So the reason why we have these rules of engagement is so we don't go into wars unnecessarily. Okay. That, that's what the rules of engagement but once are Once the for. war starts, though, like... The, the, once the rules start, there are certain strategies in place, and there are certain rules at play. Like, hey, we're not, we've all agreed that we all have nuclear weapons. We're not going to fucking all use them at the same time mm-hmm. because we want to keep humanity on Earth. Like, that's kind of a rule. So that's that we logic. Follow. That's logical. But again, so then where do you draw the line of what's logical and what's not logical? Like, there's a certain rules in place. And again, I think I think we can rules take this, to rules to war. Just it seems like it, well, you're, you, it's I understand what you're saying. You're saying like war is just like we're gonna blow everything up. Why do we have rules? Like it's just a free for all. We should get to blow everything the fuck up, right? That that's kind of what you shouldn't I understand. Get to do anything if you're if you're attacking another nation, it's like if you if you thought so little of them and their people, and mm-hmm. you wanted their assets. Mm-hmm. If that's the motivation, whatever the, the dictator motivates mm-hmm. that moment, right? Mm-hmm. He might have got on the wrong side of the bed that fucking day. Who knows why Putin's doing what he's doing? Who mm-hmm. the fuck knows? Who really knows? Right? Yeah. His own people don't even know why he's really doing it. But I'm saying, like, for the rest of the world to look in there from afar and expect them to abide by a, a rule book, I mean, it's not a board game. But, but again, I think none of us know what the rules of engagement say. So I think we're, we're, we're saying it's a rule book that has certain – we don't know. And who officiates the rule book? Whoever – when the countries sign treaties with one another. That's usually after a war, right? After wars in the past, and then they ha- they sign this. Hey, if this shit happens again, we're not going to do these things. We agree that that was bad. We're not going to do this stuff anymore. Okay, like that's kind of how those things come into play. And again, I'm not an expert on this. And and again, I think we're. I understand what you're saying, but I think we don't have the information to articulate either side of this argument. No, no, no. I know, and I won't. I can't argue specifics. I just think it's it's just funny. It's it's actually funny to me that there's a rule book <laughs> that did you. I remember like. When Germ- in World War II, you would see movies. As a kid, I'd watch these mm-hmm. movies, and you know the prisoners of war would always be pissed off because the Germans were treating them bad. Mm-hmm. And, well, the Geneva Convention says you can't treat me this way. And the Germans were always like, fuck you. We're going to do what we want. Well, right? I mean, it was like, I mean, like, we're, 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 so where's the governing body saying to those nasty Germans, oh, you can't treat them that way? 
I mean, the Red Cross does that. Does uh, Switzerland do that? Like, I mean, but but, 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 but but what you're saying is there's no governing body, so it's like, well, then why then we don't then why have treaties? The the treaty is we've agreed to uh, uh, these certain things. The treaties as keep peace, right? But but they also, if we go into war, these are the rules we're going to play by. Okay, like we're not going to unhumanely torture your prisoners. If we take prisoners from you, we're not going to. Torture them. That would seem nice, but, I, but, but, that, but that's, that's not happening but, in our but, world but today. That's, but that's a rule. We don't know that. We don't know that they released hostages that weren't tortured from this. They we, slit like twenty babies' feds. Terror again. Terrorist attack. Right again. We're we're conflating a lot of different terms right now. Okay. Like that's not that's not war. That's a terrorist attack. So there's no rules in a terrorist attack. Okay. If we declare war against a country and that country engages in that war, then certain rules apply. And yes, if they if they don't abide by those rules, then certain things are off the table. Okay, but I think that's a terrorist attack. That is completely different. That is not a war. <laughs> we do this all the time. No, no, <laughs> no. I, well, I, I, I think I think what it what it really points to is, you know, this. What is the real problem? What is really war? What what constitutes a war? Yeah. You know what what are we really doing? And I think there's all this reaction going mm-hmm. on and there's no clear strategy. There's mm-hmm. cl- no clear structure. There's no clear, the thing that drives me nuts about wars, at least from the American standpoint, since I've been a little kid is there's no, no clear outcome we're going for. You know, the public doesn't certainly doesn't get a, a the only, outcome, the no. only one where there was a clear outcome was in the Saddam Hussein, uh, Kuwait thing. Right. Mm-hmm. Yes, the first one. Yeah, first the first one. Yeah, you know they said, "Well, listen, we're going to move them out, and then when we get them moved yeah. out, mm-hmm. we, and, and before that, probably World War Two, right? And World War Two before that, mm-hmm. and and what happened was the the it was like a six day war. Yeah, and we didn't go into Baghdad. We didn't go into any of these cities. We because, were right there. All we did turn them tanks, man. Yeah, we they could have done it. We could have done it then. Yeah, we, but we didn't. We chose not to because we achieved the objective, the state right. objective, yeah. right? Oh yeah, yeah. So and he still lost the election. <laughs> <laughs> That's because he said no new taxes. That's why, you know. And uh, Billy Clinton was sexy, but uh, uh, but yeah, but you know that. That's what I think is – that's what's missing in all this. There's just – we're talking around things without it being clearly defined. What are we, what are we really trying to get done? That's, that's, a, that, that's exactly the point of this conversation yes. we just had. Yeah. We just had a 10-minute conversation that neither one of us had clear understanding of what yeah. the we were talking about. Yeah. And, and that's, that's the whole thing is we're – and then it's just noise, and it's just more well, noise the public, in the system. The public never gets clear definition on no. practically anything. Right. Well, the Green New Deal, what's the real objective there? Or, or DEI, what's the real objective there? First time I met Rocco, stuff? he goes, Rocco's, Rocco, I'll never, I'll never forget, we sat down in that old studio, mm-hmm. he's, and he said, he said, he goes, I might be green, I might be for the green, if I truly understood what the fuck they were trying to do, but right. no, one, no one can give me straight answers. Exactly right. Listen, I sat there and went, all right. Guys, yeah, no I was. Right. I, I, I From 1973 yeah. until 2000, I part of the ecology movement? I would have said I was a tree hugger. <laughs> I was. You remember the ecology movement? The, Hell yeah! The green and white. Oh panic. yeah, dude. I was. I was. I had a. Oh god. I had a green construction company. You know, mm-hmm. and I actually did stuff like that. And then what ended up happening? World I went to day. a. I went up to a Earth U, day. Mm-hmm. U, yeah, I, I went to an Earth Day in 1975, dude. Saw Peter, Paul, and Mary. Oh my god. That's the kind of hippie I was. So anyway, but I was part of the USGBC, which is the United States Green Building Commission or something mm-hmm. like that, right? Mm-hmm. And I went to this presentation. It was downtown Chicago in the Aon Center, and this guy was doing this thing, and they said, "Well, we're going to change light bulbs from this to these LED light bulbs." I'm like, "You're fucking kidding me." Mm-hmm. That is going to make zero difference, mm-hmm. and that's what I get. And the next day, I get this. This guy sends me this book, Green to Gold, and I got this. Is all just fucking marketing? Yeah, mm-hmm. you Mark. know. Now the stuff that I was doing, I was doing stormwater management, which at the time we had a bunch of floods where I yeah. lived, and it was like managing that. And it was all because of you had these impervious surfaces. Things that made sense. Yeah, and that's the stuff that I did. I'm gonna have you look at something for me tomorrow because I just dealt with the cl- an issue with the client on on this exact issue this morning. So yeah, I'm gonna have you no, I, yeah, tomorrow. I, I don't know. I've probably got 26 or 28 articles published oh, well, back you're then. Be my so. expert, then. No, I, I for a while I kind of <laughs> was. But it's a lot's changed since then. But that well, was like well, the public is the public is so uh, against, and, and I think the public, a portion of the public is against the concept of electric vehicles or green energy. Only I think because they view it as it's been sold by a bunch of pirates. Yeah, 
that are that are putting a money component that's easily identifiable and you can see yeah, if if you look if you look at everything that's required to do this stuff and i and i kind of knew this stuff at one time i was when tesla first came out i'm like down with tesla this mm -hmm. is cool but when you start looking at electric vehicles as being 80 percent of the vehicles out there and the requirements of of uh, mandates well yeah mandates are stupid let the market decide exactly. but when you start looking Heaven at those forbid, huh? those rare earth materials mm -hmm. and where they come from of course and, we don't want to look at that's inconvenient you know we don't want to pay attention to that all that stuff comes either from china mm -hmm. russia or Africa. Yeah, and right? for child labor, you want to bring child labor into that, it too. That's, that's absolutely part of the equation. That's that's Africa, is you're going to yep. have child labor. China's going to do whatever they need to do. Mm -hmm. And then Russia is just, you know, listen, and, and the part of what's going on with Russia is they've got all these resources. And, and they're just, they're like the ultimate nationalists. They're just protecting their borders. Mm -hmm. And he's a crazy person. Mm -hmm. And if there's a concern about nuclear war, it's, I, I'm afraid he's going to go off one day and just fuck it, you know. Mm. Tactical nukes, like no, I hope, shit. I hope there's enough mechanisms in place on all nations that have that. that I it, see. I don't it know would if take there a is lot of brain. Would, I think there are a lot of a lot of fingers on in the process there. From the I time hope one so. guy says do it, by the time it actually gets done, I think there's multiple people that would have to I hope capitulate. So. I hope. So. I'm hoping that there'd be some young Russian soldier in there that just wouldn't do it. That Hence, would, yeah. rules of engagement. For me, well, right. Hence, rules of engagement. Yeah, well, yeah. That's, and this is so, certainly required in this instance. Yeah. But, but yeah. So, there, all this stuff is just undefined, and we're making decisions ignorantly in this fog of data, right? Right. In this fog of information from our subjective reality, and the problem is when you don't get it clear and it's not aligned to like a bigger picture, mm -hmm. the decision ends up being stupid. Mm -hmm. yeah. And a lot of them that we find ourselves in, that yeah. either we make or are being made globally that affect us, are pretty fucking stupid. They're pretty mm -hmm. fucking stupid right now. There's mm -hmm. a lot of we we got an abundance of stupid happening right now. Yeah, you know? yeah, we do. We, we really do. do. And in that, we'll wrap <laughs> up. We'll wrap <laughs> this up. Yes. Yes. <laughs> this needs to be a regular thing. The three of us. Yeah. Like every time, fun. every time Mike comes into town, we got a lasso. Yeah, I like it. It yeah. was fun. But yeah, yeah. cool man. I really appreciate it, gents. As always, awesome, man. dude. As thank always. you. It's always an honor to be here. We'll do it again. And yes. I, I love the. You call it the Berg. The Berg. The it's Berg. Man. Yeah. yeah the Berg. Man. man. What does Yins mean? Yins. I'm still trying to figure that out. Okay. You y'all. Is that is that what it is? Yeah, yins so is like a collective. Yeah. Like Yins. Yins. Yeah. So what are Yins guys doing? Like, what are you guys doing? Is that what it yeah. is? Yeah. It's um. It and, I, and I'm probably guessing we're probably were raised kind of the same. Where we probably had parents and grandparents that would not permit us to have bad. Okay. I was not permitted, so I didn't grow oh, up. With, Newcastle said it all I wasn't time. even getting. I wasn't. I wasn't growing up. I didn't grow up with y'all and all. I actually was very corrected a lot when I was younger, and some of it rubbed off on me. Mm -hmm. What but the Yinzer thing? I just never. I never got that. Mm -hmm. Or Don Tan. Yeah, I don't know. You know, or t I say my T's. Mm -hmm. One of the things I've noticed is so in the '80s and early '90s, I worked for a company that was based in PA in Latrobe, right? Okay. And so there were a lot of the Latrobe-ish What's Western PA guys? Rolling mm -hmm. Rock. Yeah, Rolling. Exactly. <laughs> mm -hmm. It wasn't Rolling Rock, but it was a it was a company that was based mm -hmm. there. It's called Kenna Metal. Yeah, the, the, the it's nice to be an old yeah. client of mine. Yeah. So anyway, uh, there was like this really distinctive PA accent mm -hmm. that Western PA accent. Like yeah. you could tell that. Uh, 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 yeah. Dave Wanstead has it. Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, everything's mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And uh, Dick Outside. had it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. But exactly. you don't hear it as much when I come here. I, I'm like, oh, well, Pittsburgh has its own thing. Oh, does it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's, okay. It's I don't different. hear it as much. You know. Yeah. Go to At. down. Go to downtown Pittsburgh and talk to people that are like downtown Pittsburgh people. You'll you'll hear it. Oh, like, really? They're non-professionals. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like it's, uh, it, it doesn't, and unfortunately, you know, I'll probably get hate mail for this. What else is new? <laughs> it doesn't reflect great. On us, no. I conceptually, always, I always thought that Western PA region, accent, correct. France, I thought the Western PA cities. accent, is one yeah. of the dumbest accents I've ever heard. It yeah. really spoke to stupidity. But, yeah, and we um, embrace it here. And it's and it's and for that for that lack of for that understanding, I have just no idea why. But I don't do hear that, it anymore. It's too bad because uh, I kind of like it. Yeah. We, we can take it some places that you would not be able yeah. to. You you wouldn't be able to understand. We'll show you serving, next time. serving you drinks. Yeah, you would really. No we'll show you next time. Okay. All right, guys. Appreciate it. All right, and we'll see all you soon. That's what we do. Yes. Have a good night.